Hello and welcome to this session. My name is Udo Wurz. I'm the Deputy CTO for Products in Europe at Fujitsu. And in this presentation, I would like to give you some insights. What are the challenges of today for companies all over the globe? As well as what you can do with your data. And this is an interesting part. And in this session, I would like to highlight AI, artificial intelligence. And the reason is because this is one of the hottest topics when it comes to the question what you can do with the data. No worries, it will not be the marketing style. I would really would like to make sure that you get a lot of information, some new ideas how to build infrastructures. And in the second part, which is a technical presentation, I will also give you a live demonstration of a platform based on open source technologies. This said, let's start into it. Let's start with the customer's challenge. The first challenge is digitalization. By comparing those two pictures of the Pope election 2005-2013, we see how digitalization has affected the society and is now becoming a major technology in our daily life. The challenge for the industry is digitalization and AI. Because you might be the market leader in terms of reliability or quality and you name it. But now when we are facing more and more competition all over the globe and we see those companies coming up with new products, very disruptive potential, they might be not that good in terms of quality, but they have AI on board and this allows them as an example to do predictive maintenance. And with this, they can win the next RFP. There was a survey of Lünendonk, a consulting company, and they were asking companies various sizes what about the hurdles in the adoption of AI. And up to 40% said IT infrastructure is a problem. We don't know what's the right infrastructure to do AI stuff. Up to 60% said data science know-how is a problem. So the data scientists, the stuff and skills, this is where they don't know how to get those people on board and how to make it. And 77% said the data quality is a problem. And let's have a deeper look into the problem of data quality. When we talk about the quality of data, there are clearly low hanging fruits. And those are log and sensor data, which are generated automatically. On the other hand, when we think about master data, where we see the data quality is not that good, we have to spend additional efforts to bring those projects to success. So this is another topic. And then we are also facing social media the other way around. So where we have a lot of fake news, where we have to create filters to make sure that the data is in a good shape so that we can make the most out of it. But the quick wins are log and sensor data because they are generated automatically. And this gives us a good starting point to make the most out of it. We also see that technologies are changing faster. And this development is not driven by the niche players. This development is driven by the major players on the market. And at the end of the day, all our customers have to deal with. Another big challenge is the lack of stuff and skills. There was a report showing half a million specialists are missing in the EU. And this is also affecting the big brands, which have a lot of issues to hire the right people. Very often, they don't want to move there where their headquarters is. They would like to work where the data is. And this means a different way of thinking in terms of infrastructure. At the same point in time, we see that the way of working changes. And you see that the developers, as an example, they will be hired all over the globe. But it's not only the developers, to be honest. It's also for project teams and employees in general, by the way. But let's come to the DDTS platform. And first of all, let's start with a theoretical overview. And then later on in the presentation, I would like to give you an insight. How does this look in real life? Let me show you when we bring those 
topics such as SDDC, AI, Edge or IoT into a platform and combine it with applications and services. How does this look like? And this is exactly what we have done. So what we have created is we have created an infrastructure for the software defined data center with all of those topics such as VMware, Nutanix, Microsoft in combination with an AI infrastructure that you can see on the left, where we are able to demonstrate deep learning for small, medium, large enterprises, but also for customers searching for a high end scale up solution. We have combined this with the edge. So to make sure that the data can be transferred from the edge to the core and back to the edge in combination with applications as well as services. And the goal is that we have developed a containerized environment based on code ready workspaces, which allow you as a customer to have a very flexible infrastructure to make sure that you can serve various types of demands in terms of projects as an example where you have in one month 10 developers and the next month you have 100 or 200 developers or even if you would like to run your business case and you have an unpredictable amount of customers as an example this is the infrastructure of choice to serve those types of workloads and we are also able to have some shared storage in it. It's not only the NetApp storage. What we are facing here is also an S3 based storage, which means you would be able to grab workloads in the edge and bring it to the core by using standardized S3 interfaces. And this makes it very elegant and very convenient to handle this. We are also working with NetApp very closely, to be honest, in terms of very early versions of containerized file systems to make sure that this is also in a containerized fashion available. We are facing software such as Manage Now for Data Analytics, which allows you predictive maintenance. But we will cover this in a minute. In the next example, I would like to give you some more insights. What does this mean in detail? And of course, other workloads that you can imagine will run on the platform. We have services in place, could be internal services or also external services with partners we are working with to make sure that your use cases become true. As I promised, let's have a closer look to manage now for data analytics. Let me give you an example of business value. And one of the examples here is manage now for data analytics, which is a software that you can use to do predictive maintenance. It started with an idea and the idea was, are we able to predict an upcoming failure? As you know, Fujitsu is a vendor for servers and storage networks and other components. And therefore we are able to grab those event logs and see what kind of calls came in, in terms of incidents that we were facing over time. What we have done is we took the log files, we took the reported incidents, and then we were doing an analytics on this to see what patterns have occurred before some problems came up. And to keep the long story short, the idea was to predict the properties of the next 12 hour time window. And this has worked. We created a dashboard out of it where you have some IT infrastructure components on it. And the dashboard gives you an insight what will happen over the next, in this example here, eight hours. So you see there's one area, everything looks nice. There's another area where we see there will be a hard disk drive error over the next eight hours. In another area, we expect to have a hypervisor problem, which could be a serious problem in the daily operations. And this is the interesting part because it's not that easy to analyze just some log files and then you know what's going on. The way how log files are created are really different from operating to operating system, but also within the same operating system and maybe with the same problem that you will face, the log files could be different as well. So this was a hard job to do, but it has worked and the probability is close to 98%. And then we thought, is it possible to use this in various sectors? And the answer is yes, because it's so universal when you use those AI and analytics topics, you can use it in various fields and market segments. 
One of the last customers that we have in this respect is BBVA, the bank in Spain. And the question was, are you able to do a predictive maintenance in terms of ATM machines? And the answer is yes, we were able to do it. And we have won this RFP against other very, very big players, just to mention this. A completely different sector is gas turbines in power plants. Also here, the software is also serving this type of demand to make a prediction when a gas turbine will have an outtake, which could be a very significant impact in the power supply. What about AI use cases in general? How does this work? The principles are simple. First of all, we have to define what to learn. In our example here, we would like to control the output of a production line and therefore we need a lot of data sets, which is called images in our example here. So those are the learning data. And then we have to describe those images. In this example here, we have screws. So we are describing the screws. How does it look like? What about the sizes? Where they come from and so on. In the next step, we define how to learn. So which is at the end, the algorithm, which gives us information what defines an intact screw and what does it look like. And then we are doing a training. We are creating the knowledge and therefore we are able to make use out of it in the production line and where we have a camera as an example delivering a video stream and we run this against the trained model and given information the quality is good yes or no for the first three stages what how and knowledge we must have some computing power in place as well as data storage but when it comes to production we need just a so-called standard computing power which could be a simple pc as an example we are serving these demands with various technologies, such as the AI technologies based on NVIDIA, as well as the combination with software defined data centers to ensure that we have also the storage in place to make sure we can store everything. So AI is learning with data from the past and is able to predict the future. At the same point in time, we can optimize the presence by using technology such as a digital annealing unit as an example. We have a POC at BMW serving the optimization of the movements of KUKA robots in the production line of BMW. The question is how to find out the right infrastructure for your data journey in the direction of AI. Now let's assume we have this demand. We would like to have an optimization in the production line. And in IA terms spoken, this is a use case which is typically called image recognition. And therefore we have various types of neural networks as an example that can be used. The problem is they have different quality and also different training times. As you can imagine, the better the quality, the longer the training time. But maybe for our screw example, it's not really needed that you have the most complex neural network, which can also be used to do some trainings for autonomous vehicles, as an example. Maybe some others are more than good enough. And therefore, we have a software at Fushitsu allowing us to take the data of customers, bring it on this platform, do a training and give an infrastructure recommendation to make sure that the customer data center requirement is able to meet here the desired business outcome. We have implemented this with the NVIDIA technology, but also open to Intel. So we expect that Intel over the next one or two years will also have major AI technologies in place. And therefore we have prepared it to be very open and give you a trusted and independent advice in terms of the technology. The question is, what about Fujitsu and NVIDIA and why you should go with Fujitsu? I mean, everybody can sell NVIDIA, so where's the difference? First of all, you have to be aware that Fujitsu is one of the major companies in the creation of AI patents. So we are in position number six in this respect. And even if you have those other very nameful companies like Alphabet or Bosch and Philips and you name it, they are behind Fujitsu in terms of the AI patents. And this is a public and independent report that you see here. And therefore you can 
read in there and see all the uh, topics that they have considered. So I think in this respect, we are in a very good shape. To underline what I said, we have some examples shown, examples of AI technologies from Fujitsu, where Fujitsu is spending a lot of money and effort to make sure that we bring the AI technology forward for our customers. Another interesting topic is Fujitsu has now the first Exaflop supercomputer and we have won four of four benchmarks and you can see here those very impressive numbers. The interesting part is this is done with Fujitsu technology. You see those Fujitsu A64FX chip. So this is a Fujitsu processor that we are using and the Fugaku programming environment is also able to support TensorFlow and PyTorch and therefore this can be seen as the fastest machine in the world running AI capabilities. The HPE company Cray would like to license Fujitsu ARM processors for supercomputers. You may have seen the press releases last year. You may have seen the keynote of NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, who has taken out of his oven an NVIDIA high-speed device with eight high-speed modules on it. So, and this is a hardware that you get from NVIDIA and you have to make sure that this hardware will run on, on your platform. And this is only possible if you have the right server in place. And this is exactly what we have done. We are providing a server capable of running this high-speed device of NVIDIA to make sure that you get the most out of it for your AI training. And furthermore, we are also an edge partner of NVIDIA, which ensures that you can run the EGX platform of NVIDIA in the edge and can make inference as fast as possible. One of the last two topics I would like to highlight is cloud-like billing. And let's have a closer look. What does this mean? Our answer to cloud-like billing is uScale. With uScale, you don't have to own the hardware. You just use it. And we are doing measurements on a regular basis to make sure that we get an information. What about the usage of storage or CPU or whatever we have decided to measure. And you only pay what you are using. And this gives you the advantage of having a cloud-like billing without the problem that each and every single robot, as an example, who is crawling your website will produce some workload that you have to pay for. At the same point in time, we have a clear contract and you see exactly what will be the price tag at the end of the month by using uScale instead of a cloud service. What about a software defined data center? And let me just show three slides before we step into the presentation of the platform. The first thing is automation. What we have done at Fujitsu is we have certified our hardware with the software of various vendors such as VMware or Microsoft or Nutanix and you name it. And of course, you have to ensure that this certification always exists to make sure that everything will be up and running and working smoothly as expected. So therefore, we have some software in place doing all of those updates. So for you, it's without stress. And when we think about the aspect of lack of stuff and skills, I think automation is the right answer to serve those types of demands. The Dell EMC company VMware lists Fujitsu as the vendor providing the fastest machines on the market for hyper-converged infrastructures. We are leading very often in most aspects of those public available benchmark results. The thing is that we are spending a lot of efforts to make sure that our customers are getting the fastest machines on the market at the same point in time, very energy efficient machines, which is very important when it comes to the power consumption. We are doing this not only with a single machine to make sure that we are leading because we have one or two very fast machines and that's it. No. Fujitsu is doing those testings in terms of the benchmark with 
a lot of portfolio elements as you can see here and we are the vendor leading in this respect as well. So you can be sure whatever Fujitsu model you are choosing, you're choosing the right one. It will be the fastest and is very energy efficient. And this is what I would like to highlight here as well. Thank you for joining this presentation and I'm looking forward to see you in the technology in practice session. Thank you.